Good morning, Real Life Church. Uh, definitely going to be a different Sunday uh, this week. Um, thank you for just uh, being patient and, you know, we have to adapt to what is being thrown at us. And during this season, um, we're just having things thrown at us that we have to do the right thing when that happens. And so, um, obviously, this week, we're going to be online only. And um, the reason being, um, we do not have anyone that I know of in the church, um, other than my family, uh, that has COVID. Um, last week, uh, the kids went to camp, and or the week before, and um, as they came back, uh, we had gotten word that there was a um, COVID outbreak at, um, at the summer camp. And so I made just a, I made a call last weekend that anyone who attended camp could not be at church last Sunday because we didn't want to take a chance of that spreading and, uh, and starting all that over again. So we did that where everyone was um, quarantined. Um, and, and then this week, my girls uh, tested positive. They were the only ones. Uh, every, a lot of, most of them have been tested, and um, their test came back negative, but my girls um, tested positive. Uh, Christy and myself, we um, have been tested twice, and uh, we are still testing negative. We have no symptoms whatsoever, but my home, my family is quarantined for this time. So, um, so you know, uh, during quarantine, um, we're going to get some things done. You can see behind me. I need to trim my hedges, and so just haven't had time to do that. So, um, so we're going to do that, and the girls are feeling much better. Um, they haven't had a fever for a couple of days. They, uh, um, Claire, was Claire was under the weather with a very mild fever and scratchy throat for one day. Um, Ella for about three days, and her her throat really was. Um, we thought she had strep throat. And so, but she is much, much better. Uh, as of yesterday, she was feeling great. So um, the girls are doing better, but we have to wait this quarantine through. Uh, I thank God that my girls are, are feeling good and that Christy and I have not received this, but we have to do the right thing. And um, we're talking about integrity today. And integrity means you do the right thing, even though some people think it's not the right thing. So, but that's okay. Um, I think with us, our church, pretty much everyone agrees, hey, if we have something going on, let's, let's be cautious. And so we are. And, um, and, and another reason you might wonder, well, why isn't Pastor Chris just preaching? And, uh, you know, for all start there, that's fine. Well, Pastor Chris and, um, and Jamie had a vacation plan for this weekend, and uh, they had that scheduled flights, everything, six months ago. And so, um, so we're not going to ask them to cancel flights. Uh, and uh, actually, if it was something that they were within driving distance, Pastor Chris said, I would have driven here on Sunday and just taken care of service. But it's hard for them to fly all the way back or cancel their flights. We're not going to ask them to do that. So um, so this week, we, uh, we're going to be online. I, I, I hope that some of you are watching this together and just having a, you know, having a time of fellowship. Um, also, uh, next week, let's be back in church. Everybody, let's be in church next Sunday. First Sunday of August, we have many of our people who have been on vacation are back next week. And so um, let's just have the family together. Uh, make sure you watch at the end of this. Uh, there will be some slides that will go across and uh, give you some announcements of some things coming up. I, I want to thank you for giving to the um, purchasing of Action Bibles for the kids for the outreach coming up this Saturday. And if you still want to give to that, um, you can give to that online or, or come by the church and drop off a, maybe drop off a check if that's what you do. Um, we, uh, we, the office will not be open Monday or Tuesday. Pastor Chris gets back Tuesday night. And um, the way it looks, um, my, um, I, I think I can be back in the office on Wednesday. And so if I could be in Tuesday, I'll be there. But I'm trying to stick with what they have, what they have told us that we need to, to do. So, um, so anyway, today we are talking about integrity, integrity. 
Um, uh, man, that's something we just don't hear about much anymore. Do we integrity? Um, integrity. What, what would you say if you wanted to make a difference in our culture, if you want to make a difference, um, in the people around you, uh, we always say, uh, 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 the best sermon you can preach is not with words, um, but it's by your actions and, and it's people watching you and seeing you, right? So if you want to make a change in your culture, if you want to make a change in, in your generation, um, integrity is a key word for you. Integrity. Um, now more than ever, the world needs integrity. Um, not just individuals need integrity. I can look around and we have institutions in our nation that need integrity. I think you'll agree with me. Why don't you go for a walk with me, all right? We're going to take a little walk and um, see if you agree with me on this, all right? Let's go. Let's go for a walk. How about integrity in our government? Here, I'm in front of Senator Graham. That's not his office. That, I'm not saying anything about him, but his office represents our government. Do we see true integrity in our government? This is who we should look up to. So how about here? This is a place that we definitely need to see integrity. I mean, in our court systems, we expect integrity, don't we? How about our banking system? Um, this is who we trust to take care of our, our money, our finances. And uh, these guys, um, I actually know some of the people that work there. They, good Christian people. This, is a, this actually is a really, really good bank. Um, but I remember just a couple years ago, one of our national banks, uh, federal banks, was caught red-handed, caught charging extra fees to people that were millions of dollars and over 100,000 people were affected by it. Integrity. We need integrity here. How about here? In our churches. Our churches need integrity today. Uh, this church behind me, I I'm just standing here. This is one of the most just beautiful, coolest looking churches uh, in downtown Rock Hill. But uh, so I'm not saying anything about this church per se, just to show a building. But our churches need integrity. We need that in the house of God. How many of you agree with that? Whew, okay. Uh, let's don't do that again. That That's... um. That's moving around a whole lot too fast for me. You guys don't know I moved. I don't move too quick. So, uh, but when you agree, when you look at that, what is it? Oh man, looking at that, the the um, our, our government, um, our financial, our our court system, our, our our churches, in all, we've got to see integrity. We have to see integrity. Integrity. One person that I can look at in the Bible, of course, Jesus, but. One man stands out to me, Daniel. So today we're going to look at really close Daniel chapter 6. And I want to just get right into it. Daniel um, Daniel was a man of integrity. Daniel was definitely a man of integrity. Dan Daniel, he had, he had intellect. He was very smart. We read this. The Bible says this. It says um, he was gifted in all wisdom. He was gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand. So he was quick to understand. Uh, that, was, uh, that was what the Bible says about him. It also says that he certainly had discipline. He had discipline. He, Daniel, um, it's recorded that um, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. We find that in Daniel 1.8. Daniel also had insight. We see in Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 5, um, Daniel had insight. He, he had, um, Daniel had discernment. Daniel had discernment. Um, think about King Nebuchadnezzar and his dream. Who was able to d discern what that dream was? Who was able, who would they call when the hand was writing on the wall and no one knew what it meant? And Daniel comes in and Daniel is able to tell them. Daniel had insight. It was truly, uh, what truly set Daniel apart. Um, from everyone else was his integrity. The Bible says this. It says, Then this, Daniel, distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. 
Uh, first, probably wonder what what are satraps? Um, satraps was a was a title for people in into the Persian kingdom um, uh, of, of a governor, mayor type leadership position, and so uh, so that's what a satrap. So that. That, that was what we see there. I, I had to say that because me, I read it and go, okay, what's that? I get stuck on that. Um, but here it is because an excellent spirit was in him. That was his integrity. There was a spirit within him, and that spirit was obedient, obedient to God. And so we see that about him. Our, our contemporary culture is crying out for a person a man or a woman, a leader with integrity. Uh, our, our, we're crying out for it. Our world is crying out for it. We need another Billy Graham. <laughs> man, we haven't seen someone like him. We need another Billy Graham. We need another Daniel in our time. Most put their entire focus on Daniel's, uh, when we read the story of Daniel and the lion's den, our focus goes towards the lions and not eating him. Um, but really the story here is what happened before he gets into the den. That's the story here. That, that's what's, man, that's what's important. And so we want to dive into that and, and look at that today. So I have three points for you. The first point is integrity is rooted in our private life. Integrity. It's rooted in our private life. It, it, it takes uh, to have integrity, it, it takes what you're doing in your private life first for integrity to show. So uh, I'm just going to read this scripture. It'll be on the screen here in, in front of you. Um, Darius, it's the King Darius, decided to appoint 120 satraps over the kingdom stationed throughout the realm. That means that there were 120 territories and he was having 120 uh, governors or leaders over those territories. And then it says in verse two, and over them were three administrators, three administrators, including Daniel. So that meant that those territories, 120 territories were broken down um, in, into groups, probably I would say 40 each. And, and then you would have three administrators over each of those. And then it says here, it says these satraps would be accountable to them so that the king would not be defrauded. Daniel distinguished himself above the administrators and satraps because he had an extraordinary spirit. So the king planned to set him over the whole realm. Now you think about that last line. He's going to set him over the whole realm. Th those other two administrators, they saw that. They were jealous. It wasn't about integrity for them. It was about clawing their way to the top. It was about doing whatever you can to take the other guy down so you can move up. And and so we see that in our in our world today. We have a dog eat dog world, right? Where uh, where uh, people have that kind of a an attitude, but Daniel didn't. And so these two guys are coming after Daniel. Um, what was it about Daniel that caused him to stand out about all the others? Of course, it was integrity. Um, time and time again, we see him rising to the top uh, above those around him. Something was different about him. It was his integrity. Daniel 6.3 says this, an extraordinary spirit. We just read it. An extraordinary spirit was about him. Um, it wasn't because of what was outside. It was because of what was within that made Daniel different. How did, just going back to who I mentioned earlier, Billy Graham, how did Billy Graham influence, how did his influence last so long? I mean, when we look at his life, there, there's no, there's no scandals. There, there are no, there are no issues that came up there. Are, I mean, president after president after president wanted him to pray over them and bless them before they took the office. We haven't seen someone like that. What was it about him? It was his integrity. And I got to tell you, in the very beginning, Satan was after Billy Graham. Maybe he was after him all along, but Billy Graham saw it, and Billy Graham took the discipline, and he made sure that he didn't give the enemy that right. Um, there's a story, and I'm going to have a picture pop up on the screen. It's going to take the whole screen so you can look at it. This picture is actually 
um, a newspaper clipping from Atlanta. And Billy Graham had just done a revival in Atlanta. If you look at this picture, you'll see Billy Graham waving, smiling. And then what do you see? You see guys holding big bags of money. And it says there on the side about the love offering and the money. Billy Graham, after he saw that newspaper clipping and some people complained, this guy's just about money. Look, here's the pictures. Billy Graham had nothing to do with that. That was just the way the media portrayed him at that time. So Billy Graham took note of that. And from that point on, everything, counting money, all that was done in secret. It was done with, um, with, with uh, transparency. It was all, he, his salary it was always every year put out what he was paid. He made sure there was nothing that someone could come against him. Satan is going around all the time accusing the brethren. It tells us that in the book of Revelation. And so he was doing that. So Billy, Billy Graham made sure that uh, he wasn't going to give the enemy any room. So he did that to make sure he was above board at all times. And um, actually, Billy, uh, when he traveled, anytime he traveled, he never traveled alone. It was either his wife was with him or um, his ministry associate, a, a brother that traveled with him a lot of times. And, and matter of fact, he wouldn't even stay in hotels alone because there was too much. Uh, someone could try to say something. And so he made sure that he was in a room with somebody and that he was going to take away, number one, he was going to take away temptation and he was going to take away the enemies, uh, the, the cracks that the enemy could try to get in and try to come after him. Integrity, integrity. It's about what you do in private. It's about what you do uh, when nobody else is watching, right? Um, Solomon said this. Solomon said this about in Proverbs 11, 3. He said this about integrity. He said, the integrity of the upright guides them. So I know that when I look at Billy Graham's life, I read about Daniel. I read about these different ones in the Bible. They were led by the Spirit because of their integrity. Sometimes our ego shuts the Holy Spirit down and we're not able to hear the voice. We're not able to hear the voice of God. Sometimes we have to, men, we just talked about this uh, Tuesday night in the last chapters we read, right? We have to be still and listen to God. That's why I've encouraged you to, on Thursdays, take time and just listen to worship music. Don't. There's no reason right that time to, to say, to ask, to just worship, just listen to music. And listen for the voice of God. Listen to good praise and worship. And just listen for the voice of God. Point number two I want you to go with is integrity is reflected in our personal life. Integrity is reflected in our personal life. Daniel's integrity reflected on his friends. That's what I'm trying to get at here. Your That whole thing about not having to say anything but your actions speak louder than words... That's your integrity comes through, and your integrity reflects upon those that you are, are with, those that you hang out with, those that spend, you spend time with, your integrity. Just look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, these three guys were hanging out with, with Daniel, um, not too far off of age, but Daniel was by far the leader of the group. He was the mentor of the group. So these guys, what they do that day where they will not kneel, they do that because why? Because the reflection of the integrity of Daniel came upon them. They, they saw that and said, that's how we're going to be like. That's an example for us. I can look at people in my life and there are people who are examples for me that I'm okay. Okay, I'm gonna, that's, that's something I'm going to pattern. That's something I'm going to try to be like. That's very important. So, so the reflection, uh, integrity is reflected in our personal life. Daniel chapter 6, uh, verses 4 through 5, it tells us this, the administrators and the satraps therefore kept trying to find charge against Daniel uh, regarding the kingdom. It says, but they could find no charge or corruption, for he was trustworthy. No negligence or corruption was found in him. Then these men said, we will never find any charge against this Daniel unless we find something against him concerning the law of his God. <laughs> uh, just think about that for a moment. They're going to go after him 
We're going to say, let's make a law about what he has to do for God, what he is called to do for God, and then we can get him because he is not going to disobey God. I mean, that right there shows integrity. The way that I'm going to get you is I'm going to get you because I know you're going to obey God. Today we're seeing, especially up in Canada, you've seen it, uh, pastors have been arrested for, for having church and for preaching. We've seen, we've seen pastors arrested. Um, there are certain things that are being called hate crime now that if you preach the Bible, um, you can be in trouble. You can be in trouble for it. Um, preachers are being arrested today um, for preaching the word. Um, that man says is not politically correct. Does this sound like Daniel's time? An interesting thing develops while we're reading in, in Daniel 6. Those were who were in competition with him, those who were self-promoters um, and protecting their own turf became very uncomfortable when a person with integrity came onto the scene. They had a real issue. And that was what caused this. The evildoers now devised a plot to, to entrap him. Thus, they came to King Darius. And when they came to King Darius, they, they basically went according to his ego. And, and, and they set up a, a, a plot. And the king thinks they're doing this for him when really they're doing this just to trap Daniel and get him out of the way. Um, it says here, in verse 7 of chapter 6. We're in chapter 6 for, from now on. It says, Whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the lion's den. <laughs> in fact, they reported this. They said all the governors of the kingdom and um, had consulted together to establish this royal statute. Now, that's a lie because they did not talk to Daniel. Because they knew Daniel would hear that, and Daniel would go to King Darius and say, "Hey, um, this is this might sound good for you, but look what else it's doing. There's another side to this." And so they would not tell Daniel about it because they didn't tell Daniel about it. Um, they're lying to the king and saying that this is uh, everyone's agreed to it. We're all in agreement. So the king thinks that it's a lie. That's all it is. Is a lie. In verse eight. Um, it says that he signed it, and he signed it according to the law of the Medes and Persians. So for 30 days, you cannot pray to anyone but King Darius, and they've made King Darius for 30 days a god. Um, we've seen this in history. Sin. It was Rome's sin um, as Caesar. That actually, Caesar became known as Lord. And, uh, and that's a problem when we start elevating man to a deity. Um, there's only one God, and um, that's always a case where Satan is always going to try to feed man's ego and try to build them up and let them try to take down and turn people away from God. So the decree was made, and now what will Daniel do? So we read in verse 10, um, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home, and in the upper room, in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. Oh, um, I, I love when I read this. The thing that stands out to me is he knelt on his knees. Um, I have a good friend. Uh, he's, the, he's the pastor in Lake Wiley. Uh, Pastor Lewis Gunn, and he's someone who uh, you know I I believe has great wisdom. He has so much more experience than I do, and he just uh, he's someone that I can talk to at times. Just a wonderful brother, and he is he has prayed for me a couple of times. I, I can tell you, I, I can tell you when he prays, he you always have pastors kind of they they stand over you and put their hand put your hand or their hand on your head. Pastor Gunn, when he prays for you, he gets down on his knees and he just lifts his hands up and he prays for you. And it's the most humbling thing for you to see this man of God kneel before you and just pray into God. And, and he's humbling himself. He's humbling himself to God 
on your behalf. Um, it's just a powerful thing. And I've even seen him. If we're all in a group and we're praying, he just drops to his knees, has his hands up, and he's just praying. So many times in today's world, we see people that um, they just don't kneel. They don't they don't get on their knees anymore. And uh, that's 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 something the Bible tells us to do. And uh, so I, I, that just stood out to me that he he's in his room all by himself, and he's on his knees kneeling before God. That's for somebody. I don't know. But um, we can learn much. We can learn much um, from the secret life of Daniel. Uh, The third part, last part, godly integrity is followed by God's favor. Man, godly integrity. Have you witnessed it? Have you seen it? Just read the Bible and you'll see it over and over again. We see so many times in scripture where the person shows godly integrity and then opposition comes their way and God fights their battle. The accusers here go to the king and they remind him of his new law and he agrees. And this is what happens. Verses 13, 14. It says, then they told the king, that man, Daniel, (laughs) that's so funny, that man, like um, they don't know him. That man, Daniel, one of the captives from Judah, is ignoring you and your law. He still prays to his God three times a day. Hearing this, the king was deeply troubled, and he tried to think of a way to save Daniel. He spent the rest of the day looking for a way to get Daniel out of this predicament. King Darius felt horrible. He he wanted to do everything he could to get Daniel out of this, but because of the law, it was written, he could not change it. He could not change it. So Daniel, verses 16 and 18, um, it says here, so the last, uh, so at last the king gave orders for Daniel to be arrested and thrown into the lion's den. Um, the king said to him, may your God whom you serve faith so faithfully rescue you. And then the king returned to his palace and spent the night fasting. He refused his usual entertainment and couldn't sleep at all that night. Think about for a minute. We talked about your integrity. Your integrity reflects onto the people around you. King Darius and Daniel had a relationship. They were friends. And, and so we see how it is reflected on this king. He is... He's saying, you know, okay, Daniel, may your God rescue you. And then he goes and he fasts. And who's he praying to? He's fasting. If he's fasting, he's going without food. He's got to be asking, oh, God, help him. Help him. That's amazing, the reflection of Daniel's integrity. So then we read in verses 19 through 13, or 19 through 23. It says, very early the next morning, the king got up and hurried out of the lion's den. Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God, whom you serve, so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions. Daniel answered, long live the king. My God has sent his angels to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me. For I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. And not a scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. That's amazing to me, Um, how he comes out and just the, I love that there's not a single scratch on him. Then we get to verse 24, and I don't know, sometimes I feel guilty about taking so much pleasure in the scripture. When we get to verse 24, um, this is what happens. And I don't know, I mean, I look at stories, you know, I, I think of Esther and, and Mordecai and Haman and, you know, Haman building the, the gallows and, and where he's going to he's gonna put Haman to death or, or Mordecai to death. And Haman ends up on those very gallows. Um, there's... I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have so much satisfaction, but when you see that, that is just uh, God saying, because of your integrity, because of your obedience, here's my favor. So look what happens. 
in verse 24. It says, Then the king gave orders to arrest the men who had maliciously accused Daniel. He had them thrown into the lion's den along with their wives and children. And the lions leaped on them and tore them apart before they even hit the floor of the den. That is the amazing part that people forget about. Why does all that happen? It happens, number one, because of the integrity that happens and it comes to this place. But man, their wives and children were thrown in with them and they never even touched the floor. The lions were attacking them and, and in midair, jumping and going after them. Before. You, Daniel was just in there and they didn't, he came out without a scratch. Think about the miracle here, the favor here. Integrity, integrity, because integrity is, is obedience. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. What's righteousness? I, I, remember, I don't even remember who taught me this as a kid, but righteousness, what does it mean? It means to do the right, right, righteousness. It means to do the right thing for God. Right. Tr integrity. Just seeking holiness and doing the right thing. Doing the right thing. So, this whole thing about integrity reflects. Let's just end the story. I'm going to read the last uh, bit of it. And, and this is the king sends out a message to the people. Just think about this. Then King Darius sent his message to the people of every race and nation and language throughout the world. Peace and prosperity to you. I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed, and his rule will never end. He rescues and saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Hmm. Wow. Would you say that his integrity reflected from him onto others? The king, uh, that's not a king. That, that king knows there's one true God. There's no doubt about it. What an amazing story. But remember this, when you read this story, it's not just about the lions didn't eat him. It starts with the integrity. It starts with doing what is right. It starts with even, um, even if it's a hard decision, Daniel did what was right. Integrity. Integrity. It's a, uh, it's a thing that we need. So I'm going to ask you today, why don't you just take the time? Um, take the time and just say, okay, God, I want, I want to see where I'm at. And look at your situations. Look at maybe your work situations, family situations, neighborhood, community. Say, Lord, am I showing integrity in all these areas? I want to show integrity. I need to. I want to be that. Lord. I, want to, I want to reflect. I want to witness to others. Would you just go ahead and Take time when this is over. Just take time. Maybe read the story. Your, read the story yourself. Read it in a different version if you want. But read the story of Daniel. And just take, a, take time to read it and let God talk to you. And let's be people of integrity. People of righteousness. People who are seeking after holiness. Oh, what a church we could be. Full of integrity. Amen? Well... God bless you, and uh, we plan on seeing you Wednesday night. Um, if uh, nothing else happens, like I said, we are all here at the Frost Home feeling well, but we're doing the right thing, and we are quarantining, and um, so uh, so we're just going to have a time uh, as a family. It gives us a great family time, but um, but we'll be back. Uh, the plan is be back in, in the office and back in church on Wednesday night, youth and uh, outreach on Saturday. And uh, man, everyone be in service on Sunday. God bless you and uh, have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you soon. God bless.